Hello again, everyone. Chris Matthew with Forbidden Knowledge News. Today, I'm happy to welcome Sean Stone. He is an actor, filmmaker, author, and he has been a television host for Gaia and RT. Sean, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm um, good. Thank you. How about Thank you? you so much for joining us. I'm doing good. I'm really looking forward to your new film that you're going to be premiering at this year's Laughlin UFO Megacon. It's uh, called Best Kept Secret. Um, I was hoping you could join us today to tell us a little bit about the film. Give us a little teaser. Sure, sure. So originally it was supposed to be a documentary. Uh, it's now going to be a docu-series, meaning it'll be uh, six chapters, about uh, 25 minutes each. And... Uh, it's because it's just such a, an epic story that has to be told. And, you know, we get into it, basically. It was uh, initially uh, Robert David Steele uh, talked to me about, you know, he wanted to produce something. Um, and Robert's a, a former spook, you know, CIA officer who basically has been, um, you know, doing a lot of good work uh, exposing the conspiracies of the world. You know, he's been taught, you know, we, I interviewed him on Buzzsaw and, and on Watching the Hawks about um, false flags and... Um, the overall, you know, he just, he goes into into the different aspects of the power structure. So he wanted to do a documentary about uh, what he called the, the, the empire of like pedophilia and blackmail and how a lot of our system, I think, I think Epstein is a, the Epstein case is a great example, right? Of what's being exposed in terms of how people in power like Epstein uh, then, you know, are, bef are, are befriending other people in power, you know, whether it's the Bill Clinton, Prince Andrew, Bill Gates, um, you name it, right? There's a whole collection of people that were around him, some of whom actually we, we believe were engaged with underage girls. Not everyone who knew him was, but the point is that if you're at that level of power, you know, why is the Leon Black of the world, let's say, um, you know, giving hundreds of millions of, you know, of dollars basically to this guy, if I'm correct. I mean, so the point is, or, you know, at least 50 plus million staking this guy. So the point is that, you know, it's a lot of big money is being transacted. So to try to try to expose and understand that I have to dive deep into this documentary, best kept secret to really give my perspective on how you end up with this pyramid of power that leads to, uh, things like pedophilia, uh, ritual sacrifice, mind control. Um, and then, you know, what is the ideology that's kind of that's driving these people in power and how they uh, collect and gather and in a sense, uh, the dark attracts darkness. Right. So um, we we really um, we go through it. We know we, we talk a little bit about the Franklin scandal because that's that's very much uh, the tip of the iceberg into that realm as far as politics, pedophilia, trafficking of kids. Um, this goes back to the 80s. Right. And that story. And then that leads us into other stories, Epstein, the Jean Benet Ramsey mystery. Um, we talk a little bit about Son of Sam and the cult nature of the the murders around Son of Sam. Um, we talk about the New World Order agenda, transhumanism, and an overall multidimensional picture. You know, with David Icke and company of like, well, you know, you can't rule out and discount the fact that these these forces have been talked about since the ancient days about the archons, the, uh, the satanic forces, demons, you know, the powers that the powers and principalities that their spiritual people have always talked about and said exist here. And how much are they influencing and manipulating, uh, these, uh, these people to do such dark actions. That's going to be fascinating. Now there's many in this community that believe the previous administration, the Trump administration, was kind of there to um, clean this mess up, to to get rid of some of these more um, malevolent or evil entities and government and politics. Um, now, what do you think about that? Do you think that they, they were that that administration was legitimately there to try and make a difference? Yeah, Trump wasn't of that same ilk. He wasn't of the New World Order agenda. That's why all, you know, all the the Clintons, Obamas, Bidens, you know, they, they these guys were all buddies. You know, you can really see it. The Clinton Bush family, you know, how how close they were as friends, even though they're supposed to be, you know, Clinton is supposed to be uh, vying against Bush in 92, remember? But they were always like buddy, buddy, when it came to like, you know, the photos of them together, and you could just get a sense of their camaraderie, right. And so I always put it like this, I'm like, look, the system, I never liked Democrats or Republicans, we knew it was rigged. If you want to, if you want to understand how the system is rigged, just ask yourself, 
when it came to the Iraq war, were the Democrats opposed to the Iraq war? Oh, yeah. After the fact, they say, oh, it was Bush's war. Did Hillary vote for it? Absolutely. Did all those Democrats like what were they like three sent three senators or like three, like a handful of Congress people that opposed the Iraq war? Right. So come on. It, it, it's a joke. Tell me that the Republicans and Democrats are different when it comes to um, the agenda. Right. The actual agenda. That's where the new world order system comes into play. And that system that Trump called the deep state, I documented in my book, New World Order. Um, about Henry Kissinger's mentor. And Henry Kissinger's mentor was one of these deep state, exact deep state operatives who's a CIA guy who's teaching kids at Harvard for 40 years, the politics department, you know, mentoring Kissinger and Huntington and all these other people. And then he himself is has been groomed by the British establishment, the British roundtable groups, as they were called, who's who really were born out of Cecil Rhodes, the, the imperialist whose finance, whose financial backing came from the Rothschild family to buy up the gold and diamond mines of the of South Africa and create like the De Beers Diamond Empire. And he's this great colonist, right? Who basically is saying, look, we want to uh, we want to take uh, the empire, can preserve the British Empire by incorporating America back into the British Empire. So this is their ideology basically right it's just it's it's all about the destruction of nation states and the absorption of nation states into a globalized system as alex jones and others call it the globalists right well these people identify themselves as such you know the rockefellers and family they identify themselves as so-called internationalists they don't believe in the american principle of government and the republic and that's what i believe trump stood for that's what he stood with that's what he represented that's what he that's why he went to davos and said you know we stand with the with the, with the principle of of nationalism and then everyone said he was hitler because he actually stood for nationalism and like a pro-american approach to economics and to political philosophy in a time when uh the whole mainstream you know the whole mainstream agenda is no america is bad uh, america is based on white uh white power and enslavement and genocide and Yet every country in the world is has has been rooted in such atrocities, and yet America at least has a constitutional basis that gives power to the people in ways that no other country in the world does. So to me, I, I you know I I supported the fact that Trump was a nationalist, and I support the nationalist perspective, even though I also appreciate the internationalism of what globalization can offer. But again, it has to be rooted in some principle of empowerment of the individual because the international systems are designed to disempower the individual, to basically take away your sovereignty and give it to the World Health Organization or to the United, you know, the United, uh, not really the United Nations, they're not empowered, but like to like any kind of inner overarching uh, sovereign power structure to basically say, well, because of international accords and agreements, you can no longer do this. You can no longer, you know, decide that uh, you want to grow crops in your backyard because uh, the international agreements that have been made, you know, by by NATO or, or NAFTA or uh, the IMF or the World Bank or whatever it may be, right? That's going to supersede your ability to, to determine what, you know, what your reality looks like. And that's very much what the New World Order agenda is about. Yeah, definitely. And when you're looking at the um, the ritualistic aspects of this, it seems like there are many major events throughout our history that have had some sort of ritualistic aspect to it. I mean, I've even saw evidence recently that the JFK assassination could have had some kind of ritualistic aspect to it. Is that something that you find goes along with some of these major events as well? Of course, it has to because... Uh in order for in, how do you say it's like magic is is a multi-dimensional phenomenon that that in a sense requires certain alignment to 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 allow for something to actually like flow and then you start when you start to go to that high, i call it like hyperdimensional uh consciousness you start to recognize synchronicities right you start to see things and patterns that you can't really you can't necessarily say that it was it was plotted by a human mind. It was like it goes beyond the level of most people's ability to actually plan and think and 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 foresee. But you start to get into the, again to this sort of galactic force that seems to be at work, which um, you know ultimately, I believe you know that God and the highest source of of of, of goodness ultimately creates 
this universe, but are there dark forces that work within it? Absolutely. And that's the problem people get into when you look at the occult. And if you look at the occult through the lens of logic, it seems completely absurd, right? But it's the same as aliens. It's like, if you're just looking from the perspective of logic, I mean, it doesn't make sense. What are they doing with these craft? Why are they here? You can ask a million questions, but you start to go from the question of the logic to the actual experience of, okay, let's just feel it and let's just experience this as an experience of consciousness. And it makes, and it's just like, it, things happen because they've been aligned in accordance with with forces that have that have been working through all of human history through all of galactic history you know now you're talking eons and then if you can let go of your logical understanding which is based in a mind that doesn't know more than a hundred years <laughs> of its of its of, of time let alone really doesn't even know the minutia of detail that occurs within your own being in one day let alone within the grand scheme of the cosmos in one day let go of that arrogance of the mind you start to actually just experience reality all of a sudden you go wow this is grand there's a grand design to this yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely awesome. Now, to close out today, um, I'd like to get your thoughts on what do you, where do you think the majority of the people say in this country stand? It's it's so hard to tell, especially with cancel culture and the censorship we're only getting one side of the story from the mainstream media you know mainly the left side um how do you think the majority of the country feels about you know are they seeing through the bullshit are they um on board with some of the agendas going on um or are they against it Um, you know are they using their own free will and sovereignty you know what do you think uh you know it's, it's so interesting how life works i mean The media I've known since a child of how manipulative the media is. I was just in Florida, right? I mean, Florida has been open for how many months now? And people have been going out without, you know, socializing on the beach. They've been at parties. They've been out without masks on for all this time. And you're sitting here going, what is this reality that we live in? Where if you're in Los Angeles and you're, you know, I, and you're sitting there watching your television in Los Angeles, going, I can't leave my home. I can't, I can't go anywhere without my mask. I can't, I can't go to, you know, to socialize without, you know, beyond six people because I'm going to get COVID. And then, you know, like you travel and you're like, well, people are living their lives, man. It's just, it's crazy to me how people actually believe in media reality. Because media comes from the ancient uh, Medeans, right? From from Persia. These were the magi. These were the magicians. And so, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, it was a vast culture. But the point is that I believe that media itself comes from a a magical, magician-oriented control apparatus, very much like the Wizard of Oz explains. And they project illusions of how you're supposed to perceive your reality and how you're supposed to feel on a daily basis. And I think it's, I think it's weakening. I feel that people are not necessarily engaging with media the same way that the parents generation did. If you look at the boomer generation, for example, and how their whole life was built around waking up and reading the newspaper, right. And, and turning on the news at five o'clock and six o'clock and getting the, this is the news. This is what matters. This is what's, what, what's new in the world today, as opposed to, um, you know, our generation, which is obviously uh, more f- fractured or fractalized because of the social media content that that makes information more malleable and varied and less controlled. Um, it's just up to them to then say, OK, well, why do I even like I can be a relatively aware. But at the end of the day, unless I'm on the ground experiencing something, do I really know unless I've studied something? I mean, this is, I'm, I loved history because you can't know from reading the news what the situation really is about right now in Palestine and Israel. It's like they want to, you know, the news wants to tell us this guy's the bad guy. That one's the bad guy. And unless you've actually dealt with any of the people involved, like you start to realize how, you know, how, how, how multifaceted it is, but you also study the history and you start to understand some of the forces that are at work. And you're like, you're not going to get that in a five minute soundbite. You know, it's like, you know, even an hour documentary will start to give you some glimpse, but there's always perspective involved. So people got to get out of that mentality of thinking they know everything based on a portrayal or an account. And they start to they need to start to check in with themselves and say, well, intuitively, A, do I, does it really, like, does, does my perspective really matter in this story? Or can I be an observer? If I can be an observer of, the, of, of certain things, you know, maybe I can learn more 
than trying to allow my than trying to take over and say, well, this is my perspective because my belief system was built when I was five years old and I was taught this or I had this experience that triggered me. So now we're going into all the wounds and habits and patterns and belief systems. And this is what most people have to work through is to get past the belief systems that make them look at something. I've been blessed in my life to have been able to look at many situations from perspectives of both sides, if not more. And in that process, it's allowed me to grow to the place where I don't feel certain enough to not listen and hear, well, is there another point of view? And then ultimately, as I said, what, is it, what does it ultimately mean to me? Because this is where the sovereignty comes in. Just say, you know what? This is why medicine and doctors and the whole COVID thing is so dangerous. Because you know what? 90% of the time, they may be right. Maybe 90% of the time, their experimental vaccine may not kill you or, or injure you, right? But ultimately, it's like, it's your body. And you should be able to know yourself well enough to choose for yourself and to realize that, that it's not, there is no blanket statement that says, this drug is is safe. Obviously, they always put out the drugs and say, these are the side effects, right? Same with, you know, same with the vaccine, same with anything, right? So we need to get past this notion of the blanket, this is reality. There is no shared reality. There's a surface, like less than 1% that appears to be a shared reality. Our reality is unique to each one of us. We need to step into that more and more on a daily basis, empower ourselves with the knowing, this is my reality, it's happening to me, through me, and for me at every moment. Very well said. And you're absolutely right. You know, when I find something that I think I completely believe and I'm, I'm firm on it, something will happen to completely shatter that and I have to start back at square one. So definitely you got to keep an open mind, especially right now. We live in fascinating times. Uh, so much stuff is happening right now. So many disclosures. And I'm so glad you made this into a series of films uh, so we can get uh, even more information out of it. Uh, what day will you be premiering your film in Laughlin? Um, it would be, I, I think it's, uh, um, let me double check. Cause I think it's Thursday that Thursday night. Um, yeah, I have the schedule right here. I think it's that um, Thursday night. Yes, it will be Thursday night. Yes. So from nine to 10, uh, nine to 10 PM, that's going to be Pacific time. I believe, uh, you can check that presentation. So Sean, thank you again for stopping by today. Fantastic information. Looking forward to meeting you at the conference, seeing your film, and of course, meeting all of you. So it's gonna be a great time. Awesome, I really appreciate you. This year's Laughlin UFO Mega Conference is gonna feature over 36 scientists, researchers, and contactees. They're gonna be presenting incredible disclosures over seven days. You can now register for the full week for half a week or even by the day or session. And not only is there gonna be over 36 amazing presentations, you're gonna get a sky watch, meet and greets, and exclusive film screenings. And there's always gonna be only one presentation at a time so you don't have to miss anything. And did I mention that there's no longer any mask mandates in Nevada? So you can now enjoy this amazing seven day conference mask free. Just go to their website, LaughlinUFOMegaConference.com and register now. Last year's conference was absolutely amazing. This year's is going to be even better. So join us for an incredible seven days of education and disclosure at the Laughlin UFO Mega Conference.